guys, Janet here with Radiant Wanderings. Today we are talking about traveling internationally with your pet your cat or your dog. We did take our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Fletcher with us to Italy because we were going for a month. So we have gone through this process. So I'm going to, as best I can, walk you through what to expect. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay a while. And as always, there is a link to my blog post below if you need additional details or you want quick access to any of the links I mentioned in this. And please, please, please give a big thumbs up. All right, let's get into it. So first you need to research the regulations of the country of entry. Some countries don't allow pets. Some countries will accept pets, but they have a whole quarantine period that you and your pet probably do not want to go through. And other countries are pretty pet friendly. You just have some requirements and some paperwork that you need to get taken care of before you leave. Each country is different, so this step is vital every time. And the country's regulations could change from month to month, year to year. So you definitely need to do your research. So if you are traveling from the United States to another country, Country, you can go on to the United States Department of Agriculture website. It's USDA.gov, I think. I will put a link to that in my blog post below. Once you get there, you can just select the country that you're going to and it will give you the regulations for that. And then there is also a box on there that says, are you going to be returning to the U.S.? Most of us are. <laughs> so you need to click on that and see if you have any additional requirements for entry back into our country as well. Every country is different, like I said, but typical minimum requirements for entry into another country are a rabies vaccine, a microchip. For us to go to Italy, the microchip had to be compatible with ISO 11784 standards. I don't know what that is, but fortunately ours was. They are going to need a pet passport or veterinary certificate, which is basically a certificate of health stating that they're in good health, they are up to date with all of their immunizations and their shots. Now, this certificate of health does need to be completed by a USDA certified veterinarian, and I actually highly recommend asking your veterinarian if they are familiar with and have done these types of pet passports or health certificates. And if they haven't, I strongly suggest calling around and finding one that has done it, preferably the more the better, because it is kind of a lot of paperwork it's kind of confusing paperwork and you really want somebody walking with you through this that has done it before at least a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully between the two of you, you can figure it out and cover all your bases. Okay. So once your pet has the rabies shot and has the health certificate and pet passport, timing is everything here for several reasons. So if it's their first rabies shot, your pet needs to wait 21 days to enter a new country. The trick with that is the health certificate needs to be completed within 10 days of entering a new country. So you would need to get the rabies shot once and then you would need to go back to the vet again when it's closer to your departure date, get the health certificate. But once you have the health certificate, you're still not done because that health certificate needs to be endorsed by a USDA office. So this pack here, this is what we just put in Fletcher's carrier. It has his certificate of rabies vaccination, his microchip ID. So see this little stamp? It's on each page. I don't know if you can see that but it's almost like a notary, you can feel it. So the USDA has to put that on each page for it to be valid. All that to say, once you get your health certificate, you need to have it endorsed by the USDA. Now, some of you will have a USDA office that is in your town. Unfortunately for us, the closest one was about three hours away. So we had to overnight the packet to the USDA office, and then they had to overnight it back to us. And all of this had to be within 10 days of our arrival into Italy, which was also a trick because we had this health certificate within 10 days and we overnighted then we overnighted so then you're a week out I think we actually did it a little closer because I fly standby and so I wasn't even sure we had three or four flights to get to Italy and I didn't know if we would make all of them so I didn't really know which day we would be arriving so it's a little stressful so you should be a little better off but I would allow some leeway because even when you're paying for tickets something could go wrong with your flight 
so you don't want to run it right up to that 10 day or that would be really bad if something went wrong. So those are the major requirements that you're going to have to do. Possible additional requirements, um, having your name, address, and a telephone number where they could reach you on the pet carrier in that country. Some countries require that your pet is over three months old to enter. For Italy, this was a weird uh, requirement, but it said that dogs had to have a muzzle. And then I had read somebody else say that they had a muzzle with them, they never had it on the dog and nobody asked. So some regulations are a little bit antiquated possibly, but you definitely need to know what they are and you need to be prepared to procure whatever it is that they need if you are asked for it. So when we arrived in Italy, I was really bummed out because I'd gone to all this work. I think the health certificate fee was about a hundred bucks and then we had to pay $38 for the overnighting and the USDA endorsement. So I had this whole packet with us. I was very responsible and we landed in Italy. Nobody asked for this once. So I was kind of sad. But then you know when they did ask for it is when we flew back to the US. And it took us about an extra hour at check-in. So either coming or going, I would allow plenty of time for check-in, probably an extra hour. Because this is not paperwork that the airline agents necessarily see every day. And it's going to take them a while to go through it and they may need to get a supervisor. So definitely do not be running behind if you're heading to the airport with a pet that is flying international with you. Okay, so you have all your paperwork done, but there are some other things to think about. And actually this one you should think about before you even start the paperwork process. So your pet is allowed in another country, but is it a pet friendly country? Italy is very pet friendly. They let dogs go into stores sometimes, restaurants, cafes. It's super easy to have a dog with you there, but some countries aren't that way. And you are in another country probably to sightsee. And even in Italy, Fletcher could go everywhere with us. He could go into the Vatican Museums or St. Peter's Basilica. I was gonna say our gondola ride, but he probably could have gone on the gondola ride with us, but we didn't think about that. So you need to consider, is it pet friendly enough where your pet can go with you a lot of places? The other thing is for your accommodations. If it's not a pet friendly country, a lot of hotels or Airbnbs or VRBOs probably are not gonna allow pets. And if they don't allow pets, where are you going to stay? So this is really important to consider in the beginning stages of your planning when you're considering taking your dog or your cat with you. The other thing is, if your dog or your cat is not going sightseeing with you, what are you doing with them during that time? For us to properly plan for this, we packed a doggy playpen it was a collapsible, it folded super thin and then popped up. And so when we went away, we put Fletcher in this. He's a good dog. When he's home, he doesn't scratch or dig at furniture or anything, but we did not want him ruining somebody else's stuff. <laughs> and we didn't want to pay for that stuff. So definitely consider a pet playpen or something of that nature. If you have a cat, they may have claws that scratch. Hopefully, I mean, if your pet pees or poos inside, definitely don't take them. The other thing, if you have a dog, it's the barking again. <laughs> So we have a bark collar for Fletcher and we did take that with us and we did put that on him when we left because if you're in a hotel or an Airbnb or somewhere, they do not want to hear your dog barking all the live long day while you're out sightseeing. So if you have a barker, you're going to need to consider that and take the proper precautions so that doesn't happen. Now to the good things. It was so much fun to have Fletcher with us because one, people think you're a local because most people don't travel abroad with their pets. So they'll come up to you, they will talk to you more, they'll inquire about your dog's name, how old, all that good stuff. And it's a great way to just interact with the locals. Another thing that I love that I didn't even plan on, every evening I had to take Fletcher out for a walk before bed. And in Europe especially, it is so beautiful to walk in the evening. There's just beautiful lights everywhere in the streets. I don't know, it's magical. And in Rome, one of my top five Rome sites was walking along the Tiber River at dusk. I probably wouldn't have even done that if I didn't have Fletcher because it just kind of stumbled upon it with him and that became our little routine all week, he and I, and it was so much fun. So having a pet along definitely creates new experiences for you when you travel, and it is definitely worth the effort um, if you are able to go through it. Okay, so would we take Fletcher with us again? Um, if we are traveling for more than two weeks somewhere, we probably would. Cost-wise and just the effort it just makes more sense. But that's entirely up to you. I mean, Fletcher's almost 20 pounds, so he's right at the max. He's not the easiest to travel with, um, carrying him and all of his equipment and everything else. Plus we have kids right now, so that's an extra thing. But give it a try, see if you like it, see if it's for you, and let me know what you think. That is it for today, guys. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I'll be happy to answer. If you've traveled with your pet internationally and you have an experience, share that below for everybody. And I will see you guys next time.